My name's Darren Drapper from Drapper Environmental Consultants. Um, I'm just here to give you a quick rundown on how to do a reset process with an ISCO GLS sampler. Um, this one hasn't actually triggered at this stage. Um, we've just set it up ready for an event to come along, but the process will be the same whichever way we go through it. So when you come to site, if it's um, taken samples, you'll generally see a display at the top here that says sample X of 45 samples or however many samples you set it up for. Um, in this case it says 1 because it hasn't taken samples, but it might say 8, 9, 10, whatever. Um, so the first step in the process would be to hit the red halt button and it gives you an option to view the log um, or halt. So uh, in the first instance, if you've had a successful event, I would view the log and it would take you through, it'll tell you how many samples have been collected of your whole program, tell you when you turned the program on, um, when you've paused it how many were left, uh, when it was last programmed, so when we first put a program into the sampler itself, uh, the clock at the moment so you can uh, check whether it's right or not. At this stage we're not really uh, using time pacing on this so the clock isn't all that important to us. Give you an ID of the sampler, um, tell you the programming, the, the firmware that's actually on the sampler just in case you need to update that. And then we'll go back to um, that start screen. You want to scroll across to halt and just hit enter. So that actually puts it into standby now. So you can do pretty much whatever you want with the sampler without it actually getting triggered by the logger. So this would be the point at which you would then open the sampler. Take your bottle out. And you could put all of your sample then into your sample bottles. Rinse the bottle out, um, make sure it's empty and dry as best you can. And then put the sample bottle back in there. Now depending on your process, sometimes you may actually take those sample bottles away. Um, and uh, replace them with a new bottle, um, otherwise you just replace the, uh, the clean bottle back in there. When you're ready to go again, um, the, the option then, um, you want to scroll across to uh, Program, um, and if you're happy with the program that's in there and how it's running, you simply hit the green button. And we'll go back to the, the beginning, one of however many samples you programmed in there, and it's looking for flow pulses on this one. So that should tell you then that your sampler is ready to receive a feedback or a pulse from your logger and uh, it's ready to go. If you don't see one of however many samples, in this case 45, it's still in standby. So you need to actually press that green button otherwise everything else will work and the logger, sorry, the, the sampler won't. So um, um, you need to just double check that it does say sample one of in this case 45 samples. Excellent, so Darren do we do that each time we collect samples from there? Yes, so um, for every event that you come out to collect and reset you have to reset the samplers as well as reset the logger. Um, the other thing to do is just check your connections, make sure that um, all of those connections are solid, um, they're not uh, kinked in any way, the hoses um, uh, aren't kinked, there's no water sitting in the hose, um, there's no sediment sitting in the hose, the contacts on the batteries are good, they're not corroded. Um, and the other thing that you may have to do in time um, is replace your sampler hoses, uh, particularly the ones that are inside the, um, uh, the peristaltic pump itself. Um, the, the sampler will start to tell you when that's due, it'll come up and say change pump tube. Um, and we'll go through a process of changing that um, on another video. Um, if it all sounds a bit too intimidating, don't hesitate to contact us. 